Thomas was diagnosed on October 24th, 2005. He was diagnosed with leukemia. Um, from there, it was three years and three months of chemotherapy. It was a long, hard journey, and there were certainly some sad and tough times, and there was a beginning, and there was an end, and here he is, happy, healthy, and wonderful today, and we feel so blessed to have him here with us. Becca was a little over two, and it started with a limp. Um, she beat that cancer over a period of about three years, and then was uh, diagnosed with a, a second cancer. It wasn't a relapse per se, but it was a, a second cancer related to her original therapy. She's doing very well now. She just celebrated her one year anniversary from her bone marrow transplant. And we're actually meeting her donor this Saturday for the very first time. He's a great guy in, in Louisville who, uh, you know, did a, uh, did a thing we could never say thank you for in the right way. Jenna was diagnosed with osteosarcoma when she was 14. She was a freshman at Mount Notre Dame High School. And she was diagnosed five days before Christmas. I was only 14 years old. I was just trying to fit in as a freshman. My brothers were awesome. Um, when I shaved my head, I came home the next day and they had shaved theirs too. So that was a really cool thing to open the door um, and see them. And we, I guess we all looked the same, but I had so much support and so much love from the very beginning. And you know, I'll never forget the uh, day Jenna graduated high school and uh, she was walking up to get her diploma. I leaned over to Cindy and said, you know, a lot of people are watching their daughters for a lot of different ways. I'm watching her beautiful gait as she walks down the middle of the uh, hall. I was diagnosed with cancer back in um, August of 2001 when I was 20 years old, um, right before, the day before I started my junior year in college. And I was um, diagnosed with a fibromyxoid sarcoma in my sinus and skull. Yes, I do volunteer to help. I do public speaking. It feels good to raise awareness for everyone so they know that we need to help find a cure. He's spoken with small groups of little kids and large groups of thousands. And then we had this opportunity come with him being on the radio. Hi, I'm Thomas. I'm 10 years old and I live in Cincinnati. When I was two, I got cancer, but I am here today because childhood cancer research saved my life. I have been cancer free now for a few years. So it's really neat to see he can be the voice of others. I go to Miami University and my junior year they were talking about um, piloting a program called Panting Beautiful Links. We got over a hundred plus girls to donate um, eight inches of their hair and every ponytail that was cut is made into a wig then for women that are undergoing cancer treatment. I don't think you can wait for somebody else to take the lead in uh, funding these kind of projects. Uh, you know, you can't rely on the government or something else. It's going to be private individuals that uh, are really the force behind this research. Cancer has fortunately not touched uh, our three little girls, but uh, my mom battled cancer for, for about 30 years. Uh, she was a 30-year survivor of breast cancer. Just watching her struggles certainly brought it home to me and how difficult that can be. And just imagining your, your own child going through that is something that is uh, overwhelming. I think it's just a war that we have to wage. And now that we have our little one, I think it's even more important to help support pediatric cancer research. The biggest blessing from the research and from surviving everything is here, is in our, our child who is amazing and we're so grateful every day of our lives. 
and he wouldn't be here today and I wouldn't be here today if that research wasn't funded.